This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. This program contains a mountain array of the top five highest mountains in the world and the highest array. And the height array contains the height of each mountain in feet in order. Mount Everest, K2. Nope. Uh, nope and nope. So cool. <laughs> I'm a computer teacher, not a phonetic specialist. I probably shouldn't say that as a teacher. Anyways. Uh, write the method for mountain heights. Transverse, that's a fancy word for saying go through the stuff. So to trans, say I want to transverse these mountains. Okay, well then I go Mount Everest, K2, that one. Kajich, I'm so sorry. Blah and blah, right? That's a transverse and going through. Using a wall loop and create a return mountain string. All right, guys, if this sounds super complicated, I would suggest going back and looking work we just did. That being said, let's see. The mountain string should contain each mountain name and height on a new line. Hmm. Interesting. All right. There are uh, tricksters here. So let's get going on this. What are we going to need to set up? Well, I can see already we have this constructor, right? And in our constructor, we give it the names and the heights, which are the ones over here, mountains and heights. I kind of dislike, and you do not need to do this, but I just want you to understand, these values are different, and the data source is different. And what I am trying to say by that, guys, is here, I'm going to show you. My height, okay, or here, I'm going to do mountain heights. All right. Or and again, this isn't needed at all. I just want you to be clear that this is a different thing, this location than what is over here, because the name of the mountains, when we pass in names, right, what happens? Well, names is equal to names. When we pass in heights right here or what I just named it, mountain heights, well, now it becomes heights and heights is equal to this dot heights, just to be clear with what's going on there. All right, so we're going to give it those values. And then what did they want us to do? Oh, they want us to combine them. Okay, so once we create this and have access to those, we need to combine them. Transverse, again, a fancy way to say go through. Uh, and create, well, first, I just want to transverse it. So first, I'm just going to do while. And then what's going to be in here? That I'm going to figure out. But before I forget, I'm going to also do the curly brackets and hit enter. Now, we need a way to get through our array. And like we have said many times, real quick, if I have int x equals, say I have this array. This array, guys, is a length 3, all right? Now, what are the indexes, though? The indexes are 0, 1, and 2. And that sounds super weird because we start indexing at zero. So if I want to print my array I named x, if I wanted to get x1 or the first value in x, I want to say I want to get 99, I have to do this. x0 is what would give me access to 99. x2 would give me, I shouldn't have named it that, that's confusing, access to 45, right? That's x2. All right. Now, if you ask me how many items are in here, or if you say x dot length, that's the same. It is three. There's three things in here, but there's not an index up to three. The biggest index is two. So with that in mind, in our wall loop, and we saw this last time, I'm going to do int index, and I'm going to set this equal to zero. Because obviously, I would want to start with the first index here, 99 for this particular array. Cool. So now I can say index. And now, how am I going to go up? Well, to go up each time, I'm going to use that value because we want to get through all of our values. Now, I'm going to take index and I'm going to say it's equal to index plus one. Now, let's talk about what this means. Index, when I first hit run, is equal to zero. So I'm saying, hey, index has a new value. Its new value is what? The computer says, I don't know. What is it? Blok. Oh, its new value is what index used to be. Right now it'd be zero. Okay, so it used to be zero plus one. Oh, so that equals one. So index's new value is now one. And then it goes back around, right? And next up it says, okay, index has a new value. What, did, what is index currently? 
it's one, right? We just added one to it. So one plus one is two. So now index's new value is two. Great. We want to keep this under, did I do that wrong? Maybe. We want to keep this under, no, that was correct. Okay. We want to keep this under the length of our array. So I could say three, but I'm not sure. What if we pass a huge array in here? We know right now that this one's five, but my concern would be that they would add or change items to our array, and that would break this if we hard code something, if we just say five always. So instead of doing that, I know it's going to be mountains and heights. I'm going to pick one of them. I'll pick names, or maybe I'll pick the heights array, and say heights dot length. Okay? Now, I want to be clear, though. Five would work as well. All right? So with that being said, I'm, I'm not going to do that, though. With that being said, now they want us to do what? Uh, they want us to do some fancy stringifying here. So uh, that's a JSON. Okay, what are we doing? We need a, oh, they gave us this thing. So this thing is what we're going to return. And I'm going to do mountain string is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use the same type of thing. Keep in mind, guys, when you see this, this is just shorthand. It's a fancy way. It's exactly identical to what this thing does, right? So it's identical, and they're both co correct, emphatically. They're absolutely both correct. Mountain equals mountain string. So I want mountain string to be equal to whatever mountain string used to be equal to, all right? And at first, that's nothing. That's great. And now, but what? Well, I want to loop through our array. So first, we're supposed to have names here. So I'm going to do name, and where am I getting the name of this? Right up here, names, square brackets, and index, because that's the name of the variable I used here, index. And then what? Well, it looks like they even have, oh, they added the word, ooh, they're fancy. So now I'm going to do plus, right, because we're just adding together a string, and now I can do quotes, and I'm going to do a space, and write height, looks like they have, and a colon, and then a space. Now, keep in mind, the reason I'm doing spaces here, because computers are dumb. They have to do exactly what we want, that, what we say. If I didn't put a space, height would be slammed into the end of the mountain's name. So now I'll, the word height, and now I'm going to do plus, and what's the array in here? It's called heights and index, right? I want that same value, that same spot, because we know these are in order. So index, and then they end it with feet. And yep, that will be fine. So now I need to do plus space quotes space feet. And we're done. Except this is all going to be a slam together. Remember, we need a new line. And in Java and computer speak, that is slash in. That will be our new line. OK, now what this does is each loop we are smashing together all of this stuff what it used to be equal to plus the current mountains name plus the word height plus that index the height at that index plus the word feet and then we return it all here and that should shoot out something like that wait they called this print mountain heights are we supposed to put a print statement Oh, I hate that name. This doesn't print. Code.org, how dare you? This gets, this should be get mountain and heights or something. A string containing, return a string containing, okay, fine. Yeah, so I'm going to do string result, right? Equals, and then what I'll do now is system.out.println, and now I'll do result. Oh, that's really disappointing. All right, let's go ahead and hit run. Oh, and I have an error. Did I miss? Dang it! Don't miss semicolons. How dare you? Do-do-do! Victory!